Hello and welcome back to our channel. I'm Colleen and this is Our Blessed Life. And I did have a different video planned for today. We have just gotten back from the beach and I was going to um, do a vlog today about our beach trip, but um, with recent events going on, um, I just had something else in my heart that I wanted to share today about adoption. have recently seen the Stauffer family's video about their um, son who they adopted from China that they um, recently have made a video about how they decided to the words they used are rehome him so um, basically what that means is they have dissolved their adoption or unadopted him they've legally undone the adoption and he is either in foster care now or potentially with a, another adoptive family um this video is not about that case um i do not know all the details of that case however um i found that video heartbreaking um, i'm going to leave that a link to that in the description box below in case you don't know what i'm talking about but um i just found that so heartbreaking um and i wanted to spend a moment today just talking about why adoption is hard um first of all just in case you are new to our channel um and you don't know our story my name is colleen my family has adopted um, our daughter sophie from china um, as well and um, Sophie is now eight years old. We adopted her when she was three and a half and she has been home now almost five years. And, um, and she has special needs just like all children that are adopted um, now from China. And her special need was developmental delay. And we found out later that her developmental delays are actually due to a rare genetic condition called SET-D5. So adoption is hard. And sometimes I think that people don't realize that adoption is hard, that it's like a myth that, um, you know, out there that maybe adoption isn't that hard or that adoption is easy and um, it's hard. There's many reasons why adoption is hard and I just wanted to spend some time on this topic today because I do feel like I do feel like with that video that was put out um, by the Stauffer family and all the videos that are coming out, like the reactions to it and this kind of thing, um, I kind of just wanted to take a minute to put out a serious video about adoption, particularly international adoption and adoption from China, but really most of what I'm going to say applies to any adoption. It's not easy. It is hard. Adoption is born from loss. and there's so much loss that goes into adoption obviously adoption is not god's plan it's not god's you know way to establish a family it's a backup plan when biological parents are not able for whatever reason to raise their child so it can be a blessing yes um, it can be a good plan for a child and for a family yes but it's not easy. It's never easy. There's so much about adoption that is hard and can be hard. It's a deviation from God's original plan for a family. And when a child is adopted, they experience loss. Um, in the case of an adoption from China, like we're talking about now, they're losing their country, their language, their culture, their biological family, everything that they know, every, all the smells, all the food, all the everything, everything is new and different and it's a loss. When, um, and the biological family obviously has a loss of that child and a loss that is rarely talked about is the, the life that the adoptive family had before bringing the child into the home. So when you are saying yes to this adoption, yes to this child, yes, Lord, send me, I will be the one, I will do it, or we will do it because it's a family decision, then you are taking your life that you had, whatever it looks like before, and you're setting it aside over here and following that plan that the Lord has laid out for you for this adoption, no matter how hard it is, 
no matter how difficult it's going to be. You are putting your life that you had before over here to the side, maybe forever, maybe forever. Because the truth is, you don't know what the needs are that the child is going to have and what that's, how that's going to change your life. So, adoption, we said, is born from loss. Another thing that makes adoption hard is the medical special needs. So, again, talking about Chinese adoptions in particular, um, they are special needs adoptions. And although I do not believe that China tries to hide the special needs of the children, they haven't always fully investigated the special needs. Maybe not all the testing has been done in the case of genetic issues and things like that. Um, maybe they have just not fully determined all of the scope of the, of the special needs. Sometimes when you're given a file, the special need that you're told about is really more of a symptom than the actual special need. So, for example, with Sophie's case, her, her special need was called developmental delay. Well, that was actually a symptom of her real diagnosis, which is set D5, a rare genetic condition. Although we did not find that out until a year after she came home. Well, what does that mean for us? Well, it meant that we needed to be prepared for whatever those developmental delays would look like. And in reality, what, ha what it has meant for our family is years of therapy, Sophie at one point was doing eight hours of therapy every week and that's private therapy and that is back and forth um, with therapy appointments, it's expenses and things like that. It's been trips to Charleston to the Medical University of South Carolina for various different appointments for various different um, tests and things like that with specialists that we've had to do. Um, there's been a lot of medical issues. Um, there's been a lot. It's been a lot. and. When we said yes to Sophie, we said yes to all of that, whatever it takes, whatever she needs, whatever is necessary. And also just the whole fact of expectations for a child. So Sophie, like I said, has a genetic condition. Well, she is eight years old now. And the older she gets, the more there's a, there's a gap between what she looks like she can do and what she actually can do. So she's an eight-year-old child, but if you um, maybe see her in one of our videos or if you met her in real life, you would probably wonder why she doesn't seem like an eight-year-old. She probably would seem more like a four-year-old or maybe a five-year-old, depending on what she was having to do or what the activity was or something like that. So the expectations and her reality don't meet, and that can be hard sometimes. If it's in a class or she's having to meet the expectations of other people, other children, other teachers, or whatever, that can be difficult and that can be hard sometimes for parents to accept. When Sophie came home from China, she was nonverbal. So we have been through a lot with regard to medical care and special needs and that kind of thing and just having to adapt and do whatever is necessary in that sense. So medical conditions of adopted children can be um, scary and they can be unknown and you don't always know what you're getting into until the child is home. I would say that's true for most parents that you don't know the full scope of what you're dealing with until you get the child home and you, you get um, medical care here in our country. The other thing with adoption is because it is born from loss, you will deal with some level of grieving um, and possibly attachment issues. So children all grieve differently. Um, for some children, it, it takes a really, really long time. And for some children, it doesn't take as long. It just depends on the child. For Sophie, she had a really difficult time. She grieved for well over a year and she would cry for hours on end pretty much every single day and she just had a really difficult time attaching and bonding with us um, and it was very difficult on everybody in our family so because of the fact that um, she would cr scream and cry for hours um, every day and she sometimes was violent she could hurt herself she would hurt usually me but sometimes Gary um, and, um, you know, her other things, you know, in the house or whatever. It made it difficult for us to go anywhere or do anything. Um, friends didn't understand what we were going through. 
Um, really, we didn't have a lot of doctors that could help us because it's just not something that's talked about a lot and dealt with a lot. We didn't have um, really any help with our social workers, with our adoption agency, even though we reached out to them for help. A lot of the things that they told us to do were just really simplistic and they just didn't meet the um, the level of grief that we were dealing with and um, the emotional issues that we were having with Sophie. Um, so we kind of felt like we were all alone and that no one really understood what we were going through and no one could really help us. Um, we did have friends that adopted um, children from China, but their experiences were different from ours. So they really didn't have a whole lot of advice to give us because they really hadn't walked in our shoes with some of the things that we were dealing with. And I can tell you that our first year of Sophie being home was nothing short of hell. It was it was bad, it was really bad for all of us. It was bad for Sophie, it was bad for um, Katie, it was bad for, for Gary and I. Um, we didn't know how to help Sophie. And there were times when we would have Sophie, maybe we would all be at a grocery store or something like that, and Sophie would just have a complete and total meltdown with zero control over her body a kicking and screaming fit where Gary would have no choice but to just carry our, her out of the store so she didn't hurt herself, she didn't hurt him or somebody else or didn't hurt items in the store. And you can imagine how that looked because um, honestly it looked like a kidnapping because she was being carried out of the store against her will. Um, she was kicking and screaming um, at Gary and you know, she doesn't look anything like Gary. So we've had tons of uncomfortable situations like that where we're trying to protect her and we get a lot of, you know, as you can imagine, weird looks from people. We don't know if the police were ever called or anything like that. But um, as you can imagine, it was, you know, we've, that was not fun. Um, so it was a very, very difficult first year. Um, trauma is real, and these kids have, they've come from hard places, they've been through a lot, and they, um, they've experienced a lot of loss. And it's, you know, it's a real thing, and it's, it's hard. I mean, we deal with behavior sometimes um, on the anniversary of Sophie's abandonment, as well as um, the anniversary of um, what we call Family Day, which is the day that Sophie joined our family. And um, it happens pretty much every year. And it's one of those things that I don't think she like mentally knows it's like that this is the day or whatever, but it just naturally happens. And it is something that's well known in the adoption community. Um, it's not, adoption is not easy. It's not easy at all. It's very hard. There are so many different difficult and hard things about adoption. And when you say, yes, Lord, send me, I'll be the one. Um, I will do this. I will adopt this child. You are saying yes to all of this. You are saying yes, whatever it takes, whatever it takes for this child. I'm here for this child for the long term and I'm here to walk this road with this child and your whole family is walking this road and it's not easy on anybody but it is a tremendous blessing and if the Lord calls you to adopt the Lord will equip you with whatever you need to support that child. Like I said this case um, with the Stauffers was um, I found it incredibly heartbreaking um, like I said, I don't know all the details of it, but I just felt compelled to make a video just to simply say that adoption is hard, and if you are somebody who is considering adoption, um, in particular international adoption, to pray about the hard side of adoption and make sure that you're called and um, that you're you're going to be able to make the sacrifices needed because it is a sacrifice. You, like I said, you're taking the life that you had, whatever it looked like, and you're setting it aside. You're setting it aside so that you can pursue a new path towards this child. And it may be that you never get back on the other path. Things may never be the same ever because you don't know about the medical needs that your child will have. And in our situation with Sophie, 
The truth is we don't know that she's ever going to live on her own. With her genetic condition, there's just not a whole lot known and there's not many adults that have it that have been followed where we know outcomes and things like that. So we don't know that she's gonna be able to live on her own. And right now we are just gonna have to say that's okay. Um, not to know that, that we're, we're going to have to be okay with that and we're going to trust in the Lord that he's going to provide and he's going to take care of her and um, that we're walking in his will. And we trust in the Lord that he will provide what Sophie needs and that he will provide what we need to be the parents that he wants us to be for Sophie. So adoption is not easy not even close to easy. It is hard. It's probably one of the hardest things that you will ever do in your life if you choose to do it, but it is a great blessing, and I'm so grateful that we didn't miss this blessing with Sophie. Um, she is a great joy to all of us, and she's a great joy to her sister Katie, and um, you know, we are very, very aware that we could have missed it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you next time. And letting go of it all, please. Mm -hmm.